Hello everyone and welcome back to another video and I'm in the wrong screen so let me go back there we go hello everyone and welcome back to another video and today we're going to be doing the blog preview card challenge from frontend mentor so you can head over into frontendmentor.io forward slash challenges you can click on this card and then you can click on the download button so that you can get the files and the assets required for this project once you download it, it is going to go into your downloads folder and in my case, it is in my downloads folder and it is called preview card main zip. So when you extract it, it is going to extract into this folder. And what I've done is I've opened up this folder in a new instance of Visual Studio Code. So you can just say open with Visual Studio Code and then it is going to open up into this and obviously have the index.html file opened, but you're not going to have it opened by default. And this is the file structure that we have. We have the assets folder, which contains the fonts, as well as the images that we're going to require for this project. And then we have the design files, which shows the active states, the desktop design, the desktop preview, and the mobile design as well. And then we have the git ignore, we have the index HTML, we have the readme template, which we should probably change once we complete the project, but I'm not going to do that. And then we have the readme. So this contains just a readme from frontend mentor. And then we finally have the style guide, which contains our colors that we're going to need for this project. And then it contains the font size, which is the default trim value. And then we, it has the font as well. And you can see that we need the 600 and the 800 font widths. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside my index HTML and I want to open this file up so that we can display it side by side with our code editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an extension that is called live server. So live server right here. And what it does is that it allows us to launch a local development server on localhost 5500. And it allows hot reloading so that every time that we make a change in our code editor, then it automatically reflects in the browser. So once you have that installed, what I'm going to do is I just want to right click and say open with live server. And once it opens, you can see that this is what we have by default, because that is basically the default index HTML template that we have. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my index.css file, which is going to have all the steps that we're going to need for this project. So I'm going to right click in my workspace and then I'm going to say new file and I'm going to call this index.css. And then what I'm going to do is back inside my HTML file, I'm going to grab these two lines. So just cut them out and paste them inside here, save it. And then I'm going to remove this style here, the style tag, but I'm going to link my index.css file right there. And then let's take a look at this. Let me actually open this up. So the design files the mobile design because we want to build this mobile first. There we go. So we have the white background color and then we have the container, this white container in the middle, which has a black box shadow. And then it has the image and then this stuff. So what I'm going to do therefore is this, I'm going to cut all of this out and I'm going to place them inside the div with a class of container. And then above this div, I'm going to say this. I'm going to place this image to be its own container. And then this text from the learnings right from here all the way to the bottom is going to be another container. So what I'm going to do is this, I'm going to say that, uh, let me change this to a section so that inside here I can use divs instead. So I'm going to say, oops, come on. I'm going to say change this into a div and then inside this div, I'm going to add my image and the image should be coming from assets, images, and it is called illustration article. So dot slash assets images, forward slash images, forward slash illustration article, and then grab this entire text and then place it inside another div. And then we can just probably save that. But you can see I have format on save enable, so that's why this happens. But I'm just going to control Z, which is going to um, undo the changes. But for now, I want to save it so that we can see what we have on the screen and we should be having our image right there. So let's continue building this out. What I'm going to do is control Z once again. And then I'm going to say that for the learning, this is going to be an H2. So grab this. It's going to be a heading two. 
in a web project i would suggest that you don't have this to be an h2 but perhaps a button or a link which will show that when you click on it that it is going to search for categories because that is the ui that we're building for this project and then this is going to be a paragraph so up to here a paragraph and then we have an image and then the text for this guy so i'm going to say um let's see i am going to create a ul with two list items so the first one is going to be the image and then the second one is going to be the text you can do it differently but using different elements if you want but i just want to use uls so the first one here is going to be an image coming from assets forward slash images forward slash image avatar and then this, the text is going to say greg hooper there we go now let's go ahead and save this and let's take a look once again we're going to have this on the screen so let me place this to the right and then place the coded data to the left and then we can begin working on this so let's go inside our index.css and inside here what i'm going to do is i want to give the body a background color so i'm going to say background color and i'm going to go inside my style guide close this and then i'm going to grab the yellow right here the hsl value copy and paste it here save it and we're going to have the yellow background color here and then for the class of container container i'm going to say give it a background color of white there you go so there that is our container and then let's see let's reset some of this style so let's go back on top let's use our universal selector and then let's say remove the padding so padding zero margin zero and box sizing but a box which is going to get rid of all these extra spaces that we have so when i enable the padding here you will notice that we have some bullets here that we we don't need so i want to get rid of that so i'm going to say that for all the uls that we're going to have we know it is basically one but i can just say list style type set this to none and it is going to get rid of those bullets and then we can enable the padding to zero here so that this resets to the left and then let's do this let's go inside the body let's give the body a padding fireworks those are fireworks so give the body a padding of let's say one rem on the uh, actually uh, two rem on the top and bottom and one rem on the left and right so that it pushes down as a bit you know we can even do five rem maybe on the top and bottom and then let's go inside the container give it a padding of one rem as well to push the content inside the container inwards and then let's give it a border radius of one rem to give it a rounded border let's give it a box shadow of uh we need about five pixels maybe let's say 10 pixels on the horizontal uh we need 10 pixels on the vertical and we need zero pixels on the blur radius so that it doesn't blur out and then the default color is going to be black so that we're going to have that there you go so 10 pixels on the horizontal moves it 10 pixels to the right so if this is minus 10 pixels it's going to go to the left and then 10 pixels on the vertical moves it downwards okay so that looks okay and then now let's see where is our design so the image needs to be rounded oh it has it has a, a, a border so it has a border let's add that so let's say the border here is going to be one pixel solid and black for the color we're going to have that border looking nice and then let's go and set the this image And let me see how did I structure this. So it is the first div and then the image. So I'm going to say that for the container dot container, and then the div and then get the image. And this by the this is going to target this one as well. For example, if I go ahead and place a width of 100% here, it also targets this one because the way we are selecting we are selecting the container div image, and basically this is the same as selecting the second div because there's also this image inside the second div. So if you want to be a bit nitpick with it, you can go ahead and add a custom style here, like uh, add a class of like container one, or maybe like something else or container dash one, if you want. But that doesn't mean that we can't restyle this image. So let's just save that. And we're going to use this. So make this to be full width. And then we're going to say this. We can go ahead and save that for the div and then the first first child first child image 
so that it doesn't it, it only select the, the it it only selects the top image and then let's give it a border radius or radius of one gram there we go so that it is now rounded as well and then let's go inside the container div and we want the second one so nth child 2 and then let's select the h2 and then let's give it a background color of hsl so the very same yellow which is going to give it this background color and then we're going to say display as an inline block so that it doesn't go all the way to the end and then we're going to say change the font size to about one rem which is 16 pixels we reduce it quite massively move this upwards a bit and then let's give it a padding of three pixels on the top and bottom and eight pixels on the left and right that looks okay let's see yeah that looks okay and then let's give it a slight border radius because it is slightly rounded so we're going to say give it a border dash radius of three pixels make it just slightly rounded and then let's give it a you know what uh, let me bring this upwards and then let's give it a margin let's see let's see an equal margin maybe this margin is a bit bigger than this one so let's give it a margin of 0 0.625 on the top 0 on the left and right and 0 0.5 rem on the bottom actually that's that's too too small too small let's say one rem on the top and bottom zero on the left and right maybe maybe let's say 1.5 rem on the top zero on the left and right and one rem on the bottom and let's work with that and then let's copy this and let's go inside this is a paragraph oh you know what if i try to style i wanted to style this paragraph but these styles that i'm going to apply here are going to apply to this second one as well so for example if i change the font size to 2 rem it's going to change both uh, the font size for the both paragraphs so what i'm going to do is this i'm going to give this one a custom class here and say published dash at and then i'm going to say that for the paragraph that has a class of published dash at. there we go so that we don't mess with the second one and you know what i probably should have done the opposite i probably should have done the opposite because i will need these tiles to apply over these ones Hmm. and actually not let me show you what i mean because uh, sometimes i do that but let me go ahead and say let's give this imagine bottom of one gram and then we don't want fonts of two rem, so we can remove this and what's the color what's the color here it's black okay now let's go inside uh, this very same one so just copy this let's say that for the h1 we're going to give it a margin bottom of one rem as well how does this look that's okay the font weight is bold so font weight is bold that can remain anyway because all headings are bold by default and then now we want to go ahead and style this second paragraph right so what i'm going to do is just copy this part because this is going to target the second paragraph as well but if i go ahead and say change the font size here to 2 rem i don't know whether it's going to apply to this first one but let's save it let's see see that it, it also applies to the first one now the reason why that happens is because of css specificity and it happens because these styles are located more to the bottom than these ones so that would mean that if i grab this and place it above then it still doesn't fix it or you know what? It, it it doesn't fix it because this one doesn't have a style of of um what's it called or oh, font size so theoretically if i were to change the font size here to one rem and what would happen if i grab this from here and place it to the bottom is that nothing will change and the reason why nothing changes is because we are specifying a style here that says that these styles are only going to apply for the paragraph that has a class of published at so that's why this happens so let's remove this let's change this we, we don't even need to change the font size here and we don't need to change it here either that was just a demonstration but we do need to change the color so change the color to hashtag easy 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 which is a very slight gray 
okay a very unreadable gray so let's say 999 um hmm. no that doesn't uh, look nice so let's say uh, let's say what what is a gray color let me do 555 that looks okay and you know what i just realized it also changed the color for this one so probably we should just specify the color here to black that it doesn't affect the color on the top one there we go and then let's give this a margin that's bottom of zero uh, sorry not of zero of 200 there we go and then now let's tell our ul so once again just grab this part and see that for the ul we're going to say display this as a flex box which is going to place it side by side and then align it up center and then give it a gap of about 0 0.5 rem separate it out just a bit or let me say one rem because we've been using one rem all round and then i want to get the text here and we know that the text is the second list item so nth child 2 and we're going to change the font weight to bold which is going to make it bold and then change the font size to 1 rem because by default um i i think so i think by default it is oh you know what i'm zoomed out i'm zoomed out yes that's why that's why it was looking quite small i'm zoomed out okay now once we have that uh that's our entire container for mobile now we just need to add our attribution so right here where is it right here i'm going to change this into my website so tsp sankara dot netlify dot app because i forgot to renew my website name so let's see that let's save it and then in the attribution we are going to change this color to white so white uh sorry that's the wrong color should be here so color white uh come on there we go and then change the font size to 16 pixels and then let's give it a margin on the top so margin top of 2 rem push it down a bit there we go maybe 14 pixels make it a bit smaller that looks fine now we need to scale this up because as you can see it looks quite horrible on on desktop so what we're going to do is right on our container right around on the top here we're going to give it a max width of let me say 500 pixels which is going to limit our container massively but we want to push it to the center so we're going to give it a margin in line in line of auto meaning margin on the left and right of auto and it places an equal margin on the left and on the right and it pushes our container to the center and then once we have that uh oh wait a minute that is a com complete project how does it look on desktop oh well uh we didn't even need to add a a media query oh but this has a hover state so our heading one has a hover state so let's fix that with our heading one right here copy this and right below this let's say that on hover we want to change the color to our yellow color right there save it so that now when it hovers and it should have a cursor of pointer cursor pointer because uh, the way i'm looking at this it seems as though that this is supposed to be a link that links to somewhere but we don't have anywhere that it, it's linking to for this project so we can just have it as that that looks okay now let's change our font so if you go into the assets folder you can see that we are provided with our fonts here so what we're going to do is if i remember how to use font face um hmm. I can't remember how to use font face, so let's just do a bit of Googling. So font face, okay, there we go. Font face right here. Of course, what we need to do is we need to define the font. So you know what, let's just copy this. Let's go into our index CSS. Let's go to the top right below this. So font face, we need a font family called fig tree. Okay, so the source is going to be, uh, hmm. come on, come on. The source is going to be the URL, sorry, the URL is going to be fig tree dash italic dash. What's the difference? Variable font, variable font. Oh, we don't want the italic. <laughs> variable font underscore wght uh, dot ttf, so true type font. And we don't need these two, I think. We don't need them to. Hmm. We don't need that either. I hope so. 
man maybe 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 not so let's change this to fig tree let's save it okay and then what we're going to do is on the body we're going to specify a font family called fig tree let's save it does that work let's see no it doesn't should it have oops should it have the quotes okay so let me just figure this out give me a moment okay so i figured it out so what i need to do is we need to define the font family called fig tree which is the name of our font family and then we define the source property here we are saying that the local we're getting a local font and we define these two local fonts so let me spread this out right there and we're going to get that so those are our two local fonts and not because this is basically the same value as the top one so we can remove this one and then we specify a url for the actual font which is which has the extension that we want so that is a true type font or an otia font but we don't have an otia font inside here we only have true type fonts and then once we do that we go into our body and we say that we want the body to have a font family or whatever we defined inside here and once we save that you can see that the changes apply on our application now one thing that i noticed is that we have a scroll bar here and i just remember that uh, my screen is a bit small but if you were to scroll if you were to have if you were to view this on a bigger screen what would happen is this would be placed on top as you can see we don't want that to happen so we actually need to add a media query here and we need to remove this padding so this padding of 5 ram on the body and then we need to set the body to, uh, to be a flex box so that we can position this to the center so what we're going to do is right on the bottom we're going to say at media and for a mean width and you know what uh, let me actually show you something that you're going to encounter in certain code bases so what they do is right where you want to change to apply your media query just go below that and say at media and we say that for a mean width of let's say tablet set screen so 768 pixels then we're going to say that the body is going to have a padding of zero all round so we don't want a padding on the left and right and then we're going to say that the body is going to say display flex and align it at center and just find it the center with a height a height of 100 viewport height so that it is perfectly centered and then this needs to come down so let's say flex direction column so we're going to bring it right there so that now whatever screen you're going to be viewing it on it is also it is it is always going to be on the center and that is what you want so let's go ahead and let me save that let me move this to the bottom save it and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and submit this so let's go ahead and open github and then let's open netlify uh, netlify netlify so right there login and then github what was i typing anyway so we have that so let's create a new repository here let's call it blog review um, let's say fm so front end mentor dash blog preview let's create repository let's log into netlify and then let's copy this let's go into our terminal here control j come on there we go and then let's say that let me say get add all get uh what oh get in it we need to say get in it first of all and we say so what does it say master is the name default branch name da, da, da. okay there's no problem about that we're going to fix it so i'm going to say get add all and get commit and i'm going to say project complete and then get remote add origin and then paste in our link and then get branch dash capital m main so to change the main branch from master to main and git push dash u origin main which is going to push it to our github right there and then let's reload it there we go so let's reload there we have it and then inside our netlify let's go ahead and create a new site here so import an existing project from github and the project is called fm dash uh what is it called blog so there we go so let's go ahead and click on this 
and then let's say we want to deploy the main branch and these others can remain uh, the default values and then deploy our blog so deploying deploying just need to wait a few moments and then let's go into site configuration let's change our site name so let me say tsb sankara dash blog dash preview save that and then we should have it there we go so now we have our blog preview right there so what we need to do is we need to copy this link and then inside front end meta we're going to go into the challenge hub and then we're going to say with the submit so submit solution and then the live site url is what we've just copied and then the repository url is this one so and then we're going to say mobile mobile fast dash um what's it called blog preview component in vanilla html and css and css there we go so that is going to be it so submit solution and if you would want me to do this same challenge using Tailwind CSS, all you need to do is just leave a comment down below and I will do it. So that is going to be the end of the video. And if you enjoyed it, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.